you know, I, th- I felt with bourbon it made it a little bit better, but the bourbon is just, it's, it's just the taste of it. It's just, it's just Shelburne, who I feel like, you know, I'm the I'm the curator of the bourbon side of this festival. Even though you're not, I feel like you're the curator of the music side <laughs> because every time we like do a press conference or do something, you're always there, man. And like when people in the in the DWP family, when we talk about like, hey, can we get a musician to do something? We always talk about you because we love you, man. I'm honored that they they even think of me. And to think about it too is like it, the festival's called Hometown Rising. You're a hometown boy. So it's kind of fitting. I'm honored to, to be even called that. You know, I met Danny last Derby, and I remember him telling me about, you know, this whole DWP with presents a country music festival in, in Kentucky and Louisville the next year. I'm like, man, whatever it takes for me to be on this, I have to be on this. And so uh, a, few went, a few months went by, and uh, we started planning, and they called me to be a part of it, and I was so grateful that they called. And I, mean, I started playing music in Louisville, so, you know, my roots started right here. And to be a part of this you know, this show with all these you know major label acts and Tim McGraw tonight, I mean it's it's a dream come true for me. And I mean you're also I mean it's not like you're on the bottom of the bill. I mean you're up you know you're up there where you know where we would start considering like you know uh, midday headliners and everything. So you've got you've got a really good spot yep. on the poster. I was very happy with the slot they gave me as a headliner at 410, and uh, I know my fans are, are jazzed about it. I, I was telling my dad backstage earlier, I was like, literally every fan that I know that have made in this area is coming to this show today. And so I don't know if in my career I've ever had every fan that I know that's followed me at some point or bought my album it would all be in one show. But today I think it's a highly chance that there'll be every every fan that I've ever met in this area is going to be here. And so you know, it's, it's fun uh, to, to be a part of this, and I mean, this is a production and a half. Yeah, you know, it really is. Not often do we play places to this caliber that has this set up and everything like this, you know, here. So first class. Well, it's a it's a testament to your career too. You are, I mean, for a lot of people, you're just now coming onto the scene and to their to their playlist. But man, you're a grinder. Yeah, I've been grinding. you've been doing this for a long time to yeah. get some attention. Yeah, you know, um, I haven't been playing music my entire life. Uh, I was a senior in high school, 2001. I decided to uh, further my career, move to college. In the UK, I wanted to be in college. Didn't know what I wanted to do at all. But I knew mom and dad. Mom and dad grew up in education, being teachers and principal and, and the school system. I knew college was on the horizon for me. And so um, 2002, I moved to Lexington, and my grandmother died uh, unexpectedly the summer I moved. And uh, after her death, um, I found a guitar in her house, and that was really the, the first taste of music. Like, I uh, never really knew the guitar was there, and took it back to Lexington with me, and would play it in the dorm room and and for my friends. And little did I ever know that that I would eventually, you know, start developing a s- career in music, the music scene, and teach myself to play and sing in a dorm room. And so to look back on my career, you know, I moved to Nashville, pretty much played bars and clubs. Um, you know, from about 03 to 06, moved to Nashville. Graduated UK in 07, moved to Nashville in 08. And uh, it's been a it's been a slow climb, but it's been a really, really great climb. You know, I've met a lot of the right people at a lot of the right times. And uh, I've played over about 3,000 shows in my career. And, uh, you know, over 200 a year the last six years. So it's wow. been uh, it's been it's been crazy ride. And when uh, you sleep. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but if I don't hustle, like I feel like people forget about you. If you're not working, there's there's so many artists flooding the scene. And I feel like if you don't play, you know, people forget about you. And I've just always had that in the back of my mind, and I've played every chance I can. Well, and I tell you, I think that's why um, you mean a lot to this festival. Is that when you when we needed someone to like sing at our press conference, yeah. you came and you yep. did it. You Drove know? up from Nashville. And when we need someone just on a, like a random, you know, you know, media thing, you were like, I'm in, you yeah. know, so like that, that hard work, that effort, you know, that it's already paying off because I just heard uh, that you just, uh, Evan Williams just signed you, that you are like the official, yeah. you're like their official country music yeah. spokesperson. It's crazy, now. man. Yeah, they, they're uh, wrapping a trailer. They bought me a brand new trailer last week. They're wrapping it next week. I was hoping I had it wrapped by this, by the show today, but it never happened. But, you know, um, yeah, well, we, I met the folks at Evan Williams uh, at an event, and they had been following my career kind of like on the lowdown and didn't really know that who they worked for. And uh, we worked it out, and uh, here I am, man. It's, it's been great. That's, that's an amazing, amazing yeah, it's huge. accomplishment. It's so, huge. 
Unfortunately, I don't have any Evan Williams here at the table, but I'll but, get you some. How's that? I'll yeah, you know they're what? sending me all this stuff. I'll, I'll just send you some. Right on. <laughs> they they do have they do make some good whiskey. They do. Uh, I really mm. like their single barrels. Yeah. Their single barrels are really nice. Uh, so I'm gonna I wanna as I'm ask you this question, I'm gonna pour you uh, a drink of something. Okay. That won uh, double gold at San Francisco World Spirits Competition. Something I really like, and um, I want to know about your early drinking days what were you drinking when you first you know started? i didn't really start drinking really i mean i never really was a big drinker my parents never did you know um you know i wasn't raised around um uh, beer and bourbon it just wasn't popular in my in my family i was i grew up a tobacco farmer and so every now and then uh you know uh people would you know bust out the old uh, friends would bust out Jim Beam and, and, mm-hmm. and you know Heaven Hill back in the day and on the tobacco farm, but I never really acquired the taste for it. I don't know. I, I tried to smoke a cigar a few times in college, and it's just the taste of the cigar, you know. I felt, I felt with bourbon it made it a little bit better, but the bourbon is just it's, it's just the taste of it. It's just I just never liked it. And as I got in college, um, you know, and I started playing music, I started playing all these festivals and all these private events we were getting called for and I mean Four Roses Bourbon would call us and then Jim Beam would call us and then Angels Envy would call us and I would do all these festivals and every time you'd go to these shows you'd get a bottle of their stuff to take home and so we would we would crack them open and drink them every now and then but I would got to where I really would rather collect them than yeah. than drink them you know and I'm, I really wasn't a, a huge drinker because I felt like if I started drinking there's like the horror stories I've read in the music business artists forget words and it's just kind of a Wait, wait, what you know, now? Right. And wait, so, so I was like, like so I can't go drink, that route. <laughs> people drink and then they get on stage and they forget their yeah, words. Yeah, yeah, it happens. Really? Yeah. Give me an example. Like do you, what, what's a, a common one that everyone, you knows? know, I remember, um, I remember going to a concert. Uh, it was a freedom hall. I forgot who was, was, was on this, was the headline in the show. And they were, they pulled out a road case and opened the road case. And it was, bourbon from top to bottom and i don't know if it was like iced tea in the in the in the bourbon or if it was actually legit bourbon and they pull they they started pouring it and kept drinking and as the show went on the music just it's just almost like he attitude changed and personality changed and then slowly the words started fading you know (laughs) and i don't remember the artist it was at the time but uh i was like man i will never do that you know, if I ever get to a point where I can play an arena or I can play a festival and I feel like bourbon's going to keep me from giving 100% on stage and because, you know, sometimes you see a show one time, either people are instant fans mm-hmm. or they want a reason to hate you. Yeah. And that's the last damn thing I want to, is to know that someone come to my show and I was too drunk to sing. So I just went down the opposite road. So this story makes perfect sense to me as to why so many managers want to keep their artists away from me. You know, <laughs> because my trailer, have no problem with me. My trailer's always like filled with with bourbon, and, and uh, you're and like they, the devil in disguise, yeah. really, man. <laughs> and I've I've had uh, I've had a few people. Um, I, I would do ta- I've done tastings with people before, and I'm very very like I mean like just like a little nip, but I don't break out anything right. that's like uh, weak. You know, I break out things that are really tasty and good. Yeah. And you wanna you wanna you know enjoy the journey. And uh, I've had people uh, come up to me the next day. He's like, oh, you're the guy who got me drunk. I was like, you just had one glass of bourbon with me. <laughs> and, or, and then I had one where uh, a really, really prominent rocker, a bass player, he went sober like two weeks after having a tasting with me. Wow. Uh, and I felt pretty bad about that. I was like, I got to thinking as like, it's like, am I like bad? You know, am I bad, you know, for introducing these good bourbons to people? <laughs> then I thought of us like, why don't I use this as a platform to drink responsibly? Right. And I love you because what you do, what you're talking about, you're talking about like, I'm not going to be that guy. No. I'm not going to um, keep myself, you know, I'm going to keep myself a check where I'm not, right. you know, overindulging. You're not giving it up. No, right. You're drinking responsibly. Right. So what, what is it in this business though? We have extremes. Like, do you, do you feel like, you know, musicians are a little bit more prone to tipping the bottle up than I think, sipping? You know, growing up in a household that never, I, I never saw mom and dad ever take a drink. And mm-hmm. I am so proud of that. I, I, that is because we'd go to my friend's houses for sleepovers or parties and their, their parents would be partying with us. And when I'd go to my house, like you come and smell like bourbon, like we'd have to explain why. 
And luckily, mom and dad never, never, that never happened to me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I feel like in the country music industry, as I've gotten into it in my college days, I didn't start out like this. So in college, you know, I had I had grown up going to concerts and, you know, I've been around it. And uh, I feel like a lot of artists needed bourbon to get on stage and perform. It's almost like it was a, like a nerve, like nerves. And yeah. I feel like if they had a shot of bourbon, which then led to more shots of bourbon, which led to more, sometimes they needed that to get rid of stage fright. And yeah, I've mm-hmm. read that in stories from artists, country artists I've, I've, I've had written books. And, you know, that's one thing I never really needed was bourbon to, like, I couldn't tell you the last time I took a shot of bourbon before I played a concert. Wow. Yeah. And, and being from Kentucky, you would think that would just be unheard of. Wow. But it's like I just never needed it, you know. And but would you, you, you have a little bit of, to celebrate after a good show? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm dear friends with, you know, many of the people. Wesley Henderson, Angels Envy, man, we're, he sponsored me before. We we're dear friends. And, you know, he, uh, every now and then I'll go visit him and his wife and, you know, we'll kick back and talk about music and how well connected he is and who we know in the industry. Yeah. And he's got a great product. And uh, it's cool to, to, to see that all these, I see all your collection over here that you bring in. And somewhere along the line, most of these guys have, have either paid me for a show or have, have been on a show I've, I've performed on or even come up and say, hey, we'd love to sponsor you down the road. Let us know how we can help. And it's good to, to know, being a Kentucky artist, to have that bourbon in my back pocket. Well, and, and I think going back to this, but your dedication to being responsible about it, oh, of it, course. it makes you a very uh, yeah. great candidate for, for bourbons. Because they know that you're not going to get sloshed and passed right. out and uh, right. on stage, right? So that's always good. I speak to a lot of kids too. So, yeah, I, don't, I don't really want that image. So. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So. so let's talk a little bit more about you. Yeah. Uh, tell me, what was the moment you know that you're going to make it? Man, you know, um, gosh, I've had a lot of those. I moved to Nashville in 2008, and uh, in 2012, I put my first album out. And I thought, you know, if I'm going to put an album out, I was pretty, I was still pretty green in the business, green to the Nashville scene. Didn't really know a lot of people, didn't really know how to, how to set up a concert. So, so I thought, you know, I'm going to go back home and do my first concert. Go back to my hometown, bring the, bring the sound, do the own promotions, bring the bus, bring everything. And we, we set up a, we set up a concert venue in my hometown uh, grocery store parking lot. And this is 2012, you know, uh, didn't know a lot of fans. Uh, and I didn't know how my home, hometown would how well received it would be and we decided to make it free for the public and about 1200 people showed up in 2012 and you know I, back then i thought 150 people would show up and a thousand when 1200 people showed up to my first hometown release that was uh that was my first taste of like man like this is this is pretty cool and so as i've gotten uh, i've done hometown shows in 12 14 16 i did one last year brought about six about almost seven thousand people and so i've slowly watched it build you know from starting from the uh, you know from the bottom and to to know that I've gotten to play Freedom Hall and some of these places that I grew up going to concerts. That's when you kind of get a taste in the back of your mind, like, damn man, I feel like I've, I'm doing, I must be doing something right, you know. Nice. I'm making pretty damn, pretty damn good money, and uh, I feel like I don't really, you know, we get paid to load on stage and drive to the gigs. Playing shows is like that's where all the fun is, and yeah. you know, and the hype to build up, and you know, just uh, being able to like, you know, pay a mortgage and buy a new car because I'm playing guitar, is slowly like I think I've made it. So. so Kentucky. So I grew up in Oklahoma, mm-hmm. and you have it, a crazy story, by the way. Oh well, unbelievable. I had no idea. Well, I, I just thought, man, you just started drinking bourbon, and here you are, yeah. this <laughs> no. bourbon phenom here, man. What well, a story. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, what, growing up in Oklahoma, there was. Um, it seemed like everybody came in country music came from Oklahoma. Garth Brooks, Reed oh, yeah. McIntyre, Toby. Vince Gill. I mean, to- just yeah. on and on, on and on. Toby Keith. And it was like um, it, Nashville kind of had this feel for like if there was a, if there was a rising star, they'd be coming from Oklahoma. It feels like that's happening right now to Kentucky. Yeah. And you know, from uh, Chris Stapleton um, um, to Dylan Carmichael yeah. to, to you, is do you get a sense that Kentucky's kind of becoming like the new like breeding grounds for great? country musicians i agree i just you know it's there's such a springboard here i mean louisville kentucky i tell everybody that play here like there is so many opportunities here bourbon festivals this festival i mean there's so much to here to to perform it's a great city to stop at on your way home on your way through 
and uh, just so much heritage here, man. Bluegrass started in Kentucky, man. I mean, you yeah. look, you go back to you know Bill Monroe, Keith Whitley, up to Ricky mm. Skaggs. I mean, you're talking you know, even John Mike Montgomery, Montgomery Gentry. You know, all those guys, the Judds, Billy Ray Cyrus. And Billy Ray Cyrus has, like, the number one song on Billboard for the last, like, how many weeks? I mean, right. you know, it's just it's just crazy to know that, you know, how many artists have been from this area that, that have gone on to do big things. And so I'm hoping I'm on the right path. I mean, I've been working this a long time. But, you know, it, it seems like uh, every year I get a little bit farther up to really where my big goals are. And uh, this, is a, this is definitely a – this festival being a part of this is a, Have is you had notch. a stalker yet? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh God, yes. How how many stalkers have you had? Makes my palm sweat. Um, I've had uh, oh I've had a lot of stalkers, but I, I have uh, I don't know if she, this person would ever hear this podcast, but I've I've had one that's uh, that's yeah, pretty crazy. Um, well, you don't have to get into it. I don't want to I don't want to make your palm sweat. You all... <laughs> I'm trying to think I could tell you the story without it knowing it was her. But yeah, I've had them fly and I mean, did, fly planes you... that live in many states away that. They try to get hotel rooms um, in the same casino or same hotel we play or, or we're staying, and they'll say they're with the band and put us right beside each other. I've had them. Uh, I've, I played a bar in Nashville recently, and uh, the stalker that I have was like literally she got kicked out of the bar, and uh, I went back to the soundboard to get my check. It's the end of the show, and the manager come up to me and says, uh, we, we've removed your stalker from the facility. I was like, thank you. So I'm looking around, I'm waiting on the sound guy to bring me my check. And, uh, if you could look over to the corner of this window, you see this corner of this window, I saw her face pop up at that corner and she goes, Oh wow. And I was like, just stuff like that, man. I've had some, I've had some pretty so, crazy stalkers. Have, so I've have had you ever to, been like in fear for your safety or never? Okay. Never. I mean, I've had, I've had, I've had some guys, uh, throw some threats on me that just, just jealousy, man, you know, from back in my hometown and, you know, I get, I get, you get hate messages every now and then, but that's just, how I tell, do you, how do you overcome that? Like, how do you, at first it was really hard. Uh, a lot of times I vent to my manager, or, uh, you know, talk about that. But most of the time I just, I, I was, my dad told me one time, like, as long as they're talking about you just brush it off, man. You know? And so when I first got in the business, it pissed me off, man. I'd get mm -hmm. on Facebook and these people I grew up with, their family members would be bashing my music career because, you know, I left, I left my hometown and. You know, I, I never came back. I'm like, that's such a lie, man. I come back and give back all the time, you know? Wow. And, uh, but that's with anything, you know, and I, I hear stories like this from A-list artists, you know, I hear their stories and, and I guess that comes with anything. If you're in the spotlight, you're, you're going to Hold on now. You're an A-list artist. Come on now. Hey, well, I appreciate you it. You know, you're, I'm no Tim McGraw yet, but hopefully <laughs> one listen, of these days. Your, your career is just starting. Yeah. So let's talk about what's next for you. You know, uh, gosh, man, getting on festivals like this, I would love to do like, you know, five or ten more of these a year and uh you know the opry grand old opry is something i've never played i've been trying to get oh. on the opry for a decade and uh, i feel like i'm really really close and uh that's that's definitely been uh the number one top two at least in my uh in my so more more festivals get opry. in the crack the grand old opry yeah that's that those are doable definitely yeah. doable uh I don't feel like that there's not a lot of country music festivals and I, and maybe I'm biased, but I feel like hometown rising is the best. Yeah. You know, it's awesome, man. It's a pretty great lineup. I'm telling you, man, the, the sound here today and I've played thousands of shows and I've, I've done big shows like this. Mm -hmm. Probably the best sound in my ear monitors. I think I've ever heard. I was like, man, you guys are going to spoil me. I'm going to go to Chicago next week or wherever next week. And I'll have a, a poor sound tech that won't know how to mix me. Right. And you know, when you get something that's just perfect, and you go the next time, and it's just you know. Sounds, well, they, sounds maybe it's because the, the team man, knows your voice so well. DWP is good, man. Yeah, they Top take of care line. of you absolutely. So, any new albums coming out? Any new music? Yeah, you know about uh, the album I have out right now is called Two Lane Town. It's gonna it's uh, the last song that we put off of it went number three went to number three on the CMT twelve pack. It's been pretty awesome for my career. So we're actually uh, kind of coming off the tail end of the, uh, that album. The new record is gonna come out next year. I uh, just recorded the first two songs on it last week, so we're in the process of uh, writing songs, recording songs, uh, working on 2020, man. I, we never stop, and so uh, I try to put out something every two years to keep fans, mm -hmm. just keep building momentum and never never dying down. So every two years really, really gives me enough time to seek new songs, record new songs, and gives me about a year to play the song and the record. So Awesome. Excited about it. Pumped. Well, what I poured you here was a little uh, 1792 small batch. It's uh, made at the, the Barton Distillery in uh in uh bardstown so uh here's a toast to your career and everything that you've done and uh 
and give them back to your local community. Yes, sir. Appreciate you having me. Cheers. A little banana note in that this morning. Well, that'll do it for this episode of the Fred Minnick Show brought to you by the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. Uh, I want to thank my my guest, JD. Go check out his stuff on iTunes, Spotify, and um, I think I even think I saw your CD at Best Buy when, awesome. I was in, when I was at Best Buy last. So go check out this guy. He is the future of country music. Thank you, man. Appreciate all you do for us. Thank you, Brad. Thank you.